Our journey through the generational success of Minnesota Vikings wide receivers begins with one of the most successful and controversial players in NFL history, Chris Carter. Controversy surrounding his career began before he even entered the NFL. Breaking NCAA rules by signing with an agent, Carter would miss his entire senior season at Ohio State, resulting in him being taken with the fourth pick of the 1987 Supplemental NFL Draft by the Philadelphia Eagles. However, his stay with the Eagles would be just as short as his college career, and with just as much controversy. Despite being relatively productive for the Eagles, a rough relationship with head coach Buddy Ryan and issues with alcohol and drug abuse led to Carter being cut following the 1989 preseason. The Minnesota Vikings would then pick him up off of waivers for $100, and well, he would then spend the next 12 years becoming one of the best receivers in history. Pretty good value for $100. Although it is worth mentioning, he probably would never have reached such levels of success if it wasn't for Buddy Ryan releasing him and helping him get his life back on track. His time in Minnesota would start slow before breaking out in his second season, with 962 receiving yards in 1991. But his true peak didn't begin until 1993, when he broke the 1,000 yard mark for the first time, and it would be the first of eight consecutive 1,000 plus yard seasons. He would lead the entire NFL in receptions in 1994 with 122 catches. He would then put up another 122 catches the following year, earning 1,371 yards and an NFL leading 17 receiving touchdowns in the best season of his entire career at the age of 30. In fact, Carter's career works the opposite of most receivers. Often, you would expect production to begin to gradually fall off once eclipsing 30 years old, but his 30s are when he would actually be his most productive. As previously mentioned, he broke the 1000 yard mark in 8 consecutive seasons, from age 29 to age 35, and led the NFL in receiving yards 3 times at age 30, 32, and 34. His final 1,000-yard season would come in the year 2000, followed up by an 871-yard receiving performance in his final year in Minnesota. He would then spend a very brief time on the Miami Dolphins in 2002 before officially calling it quits. During his dominant stretch between 1993 and 2000, he racked up 8 Pro Bowl appearances and 2 First Team All-Pro nominations. What makes Carter's production even crazier is that during his 12 years with the Vikings, he played with 13 different starting quarterbacks. It didn't matter who was throwing him the ball, he was going to catch it. Of course his time with the Vikings didn't come without its own controversy, as he often riffed with his own teammates, coaches, and the media. But ultimately, when it was all said and done, and after having to wait several years past his first eligibility date, Carter was finally inducted into the NFL Hall of Fame in 2013. In total for his career, Chris Carter caught 1,101 passes for 13,899 yards and 130 touchdowns. And he owns the Vikings all-time records in receptions, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns. Ranking 6th all-time in the entirety of NFL history in catches, and 4th all-time in NFL history in receiving touchdowns. Pretty good value for that $100 waiver wire pickup back in 1990. But the next generational talent at wide receiver for the Minnesota Vikings might be just as good, and he picked up the baton right where Carter left off. Our next wide receiver to make the list is the legendary Randy Moss, who was drafted by the Vikings in 1998 with the 21st overall pick in the draft. Nobody would deny that Moss should have gone much earlier based purely on his freakish athletic talent, but off the field issues made many teams hesitant. One team in particular who passed on Moss stood above the rest, the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys were Moss's favorite team growing up, and he thought that was going to be his destination in the draft, but instead Jerry Jones passed on him, and Moss immediately made a point to disprove every team that passed on him in the draft, especially the Cowboys. In his rookie season on Thanksgiving, Moss got to face the Cowboys for the very first time. If I told you he only caught three passes in that entire game, you would assume he probably had a disappointing day. But it's actually quite the opposite. 
On just three catches, Moss went off for 163 yards and three touchdowns, literally the definition of an explosive playmaker. That season, Moss and the before-mentioned Chris Carter helped make the Vikings the number one rated offense in NFL history at the time which would later be passed by the 2007 New England Patriots, which Moss also happened to play for. Moss's magical rookie season though would end with 1,313 yards, third most in the NFL that year, 69 receptions, and a league leading 17 touchdowns. He would be a lock for Offensive Rookie of the Year and made his first Pro Bowl and first first team All Pro selection, and even came in third for MVP and Offensive Player of the Year voting as a rookie wide receiver and his production from there really never slowed down in Minnesota, earning well over a thousand yards in six consecutive seasons to start his career in leading the NFL in receiving touchdowns three times as a member of the Vikings. His best season as a Viking would come in 2003, when he went off for 1,632 yards and 17 touchdowns on 111 receptions. However, the following year Moss would suffer a hamstring injury that held him back for several games finishing with only 767 yards and ending his streak of 1,000 yard seasons. This would also be his final year in Minnesota, as they would trade Moss to the Raiders in exchange for the 7th overall pick in the draft, linebacker Napoleon Harris in a 7th round draft pick. His two years on the lowly Raiders were unspectacular and Moss would even admit to not giving his full effort due to being unhappy in Oakland. After two seasons, he would be traded to the Patriots in exchange for a fourth round draft pick. There, he'd put up three stellar seasons and helped the Patriots lead one of the greatest offenses of all time in 2007. That year, he put up 1,493 yards and an NFL record breaking 23 touchdown receptions in a single season. He would lead the NFL in receiving touchdowns again in 2009 with 13. But things would go off the deep end in 2010 when Moss was unhappy with his contract situation on the Patriots. He demanded to be traded and their quest was fulfilled following a week 4 Monday night game against the Dolphins. He would actually return home to the Vikings in exchange for a third round draft pick and a next year seventh round pick. But Moss would only spend four weeks in Minnesota before it was announced he would be waived by the Vikings. Moss had reportedly criticized head coach Brad Childress and other players on the team, even telling the Vikings owner that Childress was unfit to be the head coach of the team. The owner chose to release Moss, who would be picked up by the Tennessee Titans on waivers. And just for the record, the Vikings would go on to fire Childress just several weeks later. Moss would finish 2010 with 393 yards on 28 receptions and 5 touchdowns. He would retire in 2011, before announcing a return to football in 2012. The San Francisco 49ers would sign him at age 35, and Moss would catch 28 passes for 434 yards and 3 touchdowns on the season, before officially retiring for good at the end of the year. Moss finished his career with six Pro Bowls and four first-team All-Pro selections as well as winning Offensive Rookie of the Year. He ended his career as the Vikings' second all-time leader in receptions, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns, behind only Chris Carter. All in all, he finished with the fourth most receiving yards in NFL history and the second most receiving touchdowns in NFL history behind only Jerry Rice in two spots above Chris Carter on the all-time list. His career stat totals come out to 982 receptions, 15,292 yards, and 156 receiving touchdowns. Randy Moss truly was one of a kind, and stood as one of the greatest offensive threats in NFL history, and continues the tradition of game-breaking talent at the wide receiver position of the Minnesota Vikings. Before moving on, I do want to quickly shout out two names who helped fill the gap between Moss's departure and the arrival of the next name on our list. Adam Thielen was drafted in 2014 and Stefan Diggs drafted in 2015 provided a dynamic receiving duo who were among the best of their position for several years. Thielen, who still plays for the Vikings, currently sits fourth on Minnesota's all-time receiving yards and touchdowns list with 6,519 yards and 52 touchdowns on 500 118 receptions. 
which ranks third highest in franchise history. Stephon Diggs was traded to Buffalo after five years with the Vikings, but he still finished top 10 in receptions, yards, and touchdowns for the franchise. Neither of these two guys were quite good enough to reach the heights of the previously mentioned receivers, and since that bar was set so high, they didn't quite make the cut to join this list. Our final addition to the list of generational talent at the Vikings wide receiver position is a look into the present and future, the sensational Justin Jefferson. To be joining a list populated by Chris Carter and Randy Moss, it's quite the bar to pass, but given his body of work in the NFL already, I think it's safe to say he's on track to establish himself on this list. Jefferson was taken with the 22nd overall selection in the first round of the 2020 NFL Draft by the Vikings. His first NFL start came in week 3 of 2020, and he subsequently went off for 175 receiving yards and a touchdown. Jefferson had already arrived in his very first start. In just his rookie year, he put up a casual 1,400 yards and 7 touchdowns on 88 receptions. He proved this was no fluke by topping that with 108 receptions for 1,616 yards and 10 touchdowns his sophomore season. And now, in 2022, as of week 11 as I record this, Jefferson already has 1,232 yards and 5 touchdowns. In just partly through his third NFL season, Jefferson sits at 11th all-time in Vikings history, and could move into the top 10 by the end of this year. Of course, a lot can happen between now and the end of his career, but if he is capable of staying anywhere near this level of production for the rest of his career, then he could easily be in the top 3 in Vikings history, if not the top spot in Vikings history. Through his first two completed seasons, Jefferson has two Pro Bowl appearances and was elected as the member of the 2020 NFL All-Rookie Team. His stats currently sit at 277 receptions for 4,248 yards and 22 touchdowns. Already established as one of the premier threats in the NFL, the sky is the only limit for Justin Jefferson as he moves forward with a sensational start to his NFL career. That concludes my list of generational talent at the Vikings wide receiver position. Although this list really could have began even earlier in the 1970s with Sammy White, who played between 1976 and 1985, followed directly by Anthony Carter in the 80s, who played from 85 to 93, both of which made several Pro Bowls, eclipsed 1,000 yards at least once, and were one of the top receiving threats of their eras. But the success of the Vikings receivers was just too much to whittle down. Hard to believe, but they've just had too much success at the position, and given the insane talent of Carter and Moss, I felt they deserved to be the main focus of this video, along with the off-the-charts potential of Justin Jefferson. Who would you include on the list of greatest Vikings wide receivers? Is Justin Jefferson a lock to be the next generational talent to pass through Minnesota? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, I invite you to hit the like button, it really does help me. And of course, please hit subscribe if you'd like to stay notified of future uploads and join our growing community. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.